Bill here at PowerTrickHealth.com. We're going to talk today about back flushing the oil cooler in a 6 liter truck, okay? This is a 2003 truck that we pulled up here a couple years ago. What, what he's noticed is that there's a, there's a big gap between the numbers for his engine oil temps and his engine coolant temps. You want to keep those at a real tight margin because if, they're, if, they're, if the engine oil gets too hot, especially under a towing load situation, if, if the oil gets too hot and the, and the, and the coolant is too low, then that means that it's, the oil is not being cooled down, which means that the oil cooler is not functioning correctly. Right. So, lots of times this doesn't happen in a truck that's just rolling down the road and you're minding your own business. It has to be loaded to make it happen. So that's what we're doing here. We're going to load this and test it. Alright, here we go. 227, starting out. 226. Let's see if we can run this bitch up to 230, 235 this time. Come on now. flushing uh, an oil cooler in a 6 liter. It's not something we do every day because lots of times these coolers are so clogged that they uh, really need to be replaced but it can be done and it can be done as a preventative measure like every 50 to 100,000 miles to make sure that the oil cooler stays clean. Now this is a 2003 and now we're having a, a, a very large delta uh, uh, between the engine coolant temp and the engine oil temperature and as a result of that, we're going to back flush this to see if we can straighten it out. Because we know that this cooler is relatively new in this truck. It only got about a few thousand miles on it. And it shouldn't be having this large a delta. So we're going to back flush it today. And we'll show you how we do this and in an effort to, to get this truck to run correctly and the temperatures stay down and not cause any long-term problems on the truck. All right, well, we have another truck here in the shop. This thing appears to be, what is this thing, an 0, 03? This is also an 03. And uh, we've got the, the cab off of this one, and you can see where the turbo's been removed and whatnot. This is an 03 because it has this piece across the back here. Uh, and it also has the ICP sensor in the back of the motor, not on the valve cover up over here. So this is definitely an early 03. Now, the oil cooler sits right underneath the oil filter, and the fuel filter housing bolts right into the top of it here. And the part that we're going after here when we do the, uh, do the flush is to remove this piece right here. Even though it may be difficult to see it, once we're actually doing the flush, this is where it's located, is right here. So the part that we're after here, this is an oil cooler. This is actually the outlet where the water that's picked up the heat from the oil is coming out of the uh, oil cooler. This is a coffee table book that Ford makes that you can sit and look at it. Or for me, it's a potty book because it sits next to the toilet and I, watch, I read it when I have a minute. But here, the... the, the Water travels through this engine, okay, and it comes through the block and up through the bottom of the oil cooler. It actually comes up through here, okay, and then comes through the cooler and then comes and then goes into the EGR uh, cooler right here. This, this part right here, this part right here is the part where the, the water comes out and goes into the EGR cooler. 
So if we take this right here and we remove this, this little plate right here, this, this exit plate, we can actually push the, the, the air the other direction, water and air pressurized through the system and push any sort of debris that's inside the cooler back out of the cooler. And it will end up into the radiator in the lower radiator hose and come out and fall down into this pan that we have conveniently located underneath the bottom of the truck. So what we did here was, was we took this top piece off of one of the junk motors that we had around here and we actually put a, a, you know, a little hose connector. We drilled it and tapped it and what we'll do is we'll end up taking this piece off of this truck right here and we'll put this one on and then we're going to push air pressurized water back through the system in an effort to help dislodge some of the crud that's possibly caught in the oil cooler. Now, there's no guarantee this is going to work. Okay, this is, this is something that you, you do and you hope uh, very possibly we may be going back in here and putting oil cooler into this truck in order to alleviate this problem. And who didn't change our oil in the truck this came off of? This thing, I think, died a very ugly death, whatever the motor this came off of. Come on, man. Who did that? The two pieces together that we fabricated, this one actually blocks where it goes into the EGR cooler. And then we have this cute little uh, water outlet here that we're going to... Where's that? This is the tool that we use. We actually have a hose that comes off that, and this end clamps to this piece. You got water that comes in here, and you have air that comes in here. This is an old-school radiator flushing... Uh, device. These things have been around a hundred years and as a kid I've seen them around radiator shops and certain repair shops. There, there's only a couple places you can buy these things anymore but and it's not really necessary that you get something this this fancy with this type of valve. A simple air valve and a water valve with a T in it you can actually uh, figure out the same idea at home if it's just a one or two time use uh, you know with some pieces from Home Depot and whatnot a few brass pieces to make this happen but since we do this on a regular basis we went ahead and bought the, the correct tool. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, install the, the pieces here on the top of the intake here and, uh, and start the, uh, the flushing process. So we got the apparatus hooked up here. We got water coming in to the hose here. We got air coming in. We got the lower radiator hose off down here where it's going to splash into the pan. It's going to be it's a clean pan so we can see what comes out. And then we're hooked in right down in here. Like we showed you. So, all right, Mikey, you're done. Start. The Douche Master 1000 engage here. Okay, so you open your water hose. See if anything ugly comes out down there. Notably nasty. And then you hit it with this uh, air. And see, you see how it pushes. It'll, it'll dislodge it. So you. You actually shock it with the, with the air, and then it helps the stuff come out the bottom here. Is it actually coming out? It's coming out of the lower hose, isn't it, Mikey? It's going back through the block and back into the trunk cover through the water pump area and right out the right out to the ground there. Right out of the, the that hose. lower hose, yeah. and the radiator's empty at this point, right? Yes. Okay. I mean, if you wanted to flush your system, this would be the hardcore way to do it. Um, you know, the power flush, I reckon you'd call it. This is about all you need. You need about all there is. If it's going to come out, that's going to get it to come out right there. See down, you can see down here in the bottom of the pan that there is some rusty doo-doo. And that would be enough to cause our deltas to be out. The differential between engine cooling temp and engine oil temp. That could cause that. See, sometimes you get stuff like this, it's paper or something, maybe a, a gasket that got cleaned a little bit off of the block or something ended up down in the water jackets. So now at this point, we're going to get all this stuff back off of here, put the uh, correct coolant and, uh, and water mixture back in this truck, and then we're going to put that trailer back on it, back up, and then we're going to pull that long hill off of exit 12 on 985 in Flowery Branch, Georgia. Southbound, it's a long, hard pull, and then we're going to see if our temperatures have changed at all. See if we've actually got done any good here. So, all right, here we go. 227, starting out. Let's see if we can get 235. And see how fast this thing cools down. And we don't get that 18 degree delta we got the last time. So here we go. Up the hill we go. 
of this entrance ramp. It climbs, climbs, climbs. All right, we're 228. Now I gotta keep those EGTs down. Keep those EGTs down. 29. But if the engine oil cooler is working correctly, then that means that it's never going to heat up to begin with. So we're at 230, as high as we can go. We're in the exact same run we did, just under 1250. 231, 224. It's all about transferring that heat. It's all about thermodynamics, getting that heat out of the oil and into the, fuel, into the coolant so that it can run across the radiator and cool it down. Come on, give me, give me another degree. We're still only 11 degree delta. Ford says you can have up to a 20 degree delta, which I think is a bit extreme. 234. Come on, baby, give me 235. There it is. Who's your daddy? All right, 237, which is warm. This is hot. And now the fan's starting to kick on at 235. No real rhyme or reason when these fans come on. I've seen them come on at 225. I've seen them come on at 230. I've seen them come on at 235. It has, has to do with the way your the factory programming is in your computer. But it's falling. And you see, the thing that's different now between the run that we did before we cleaned the oil cooler is that we only have a 15 degree delta now. A 14 degree delta, not 18. And that few degrees makes all the difference. 13. I see, and the engine coolant temp's dropping, and the engine oil temp's dropping, all at the same time. That means that the oil cooler is actually working like it's supposed to. It's actually getting the heat out of the oil. An hour a time, maybe two hours a time, uh, instead of, you know, $1,500, $1,600 for an oil cooler replacement, and he's able to go do what he's going to go do. 13 degree delta after it's been run hard. I think that's acceptable. Also, if you're watching my videos and you're not watching them on PowerStrokeHelp.com, you're really missing where the action is. You need to go to the website PowerStrokeHelp.com and check us out because there's a lot of information on there that could be very useful to you as a PowerStroke owner to keep your truck on the road as long as possible. Remember, if you press the Arch Oil button, all the proceeds from Arch Oil uh, go to help train a vet, the nonprofit organization that I run, to help veterans ease their way back into civilian life. Thank you for all your support for making PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop for PowerStroke owners on the internet.